Hi Thinkers, welcome to the Object Oriented Design course on ThinkX Academy. In the previous tutorial, we studied a, uh, a very important principle, the Liskov substitution. In this video, we are going to cover the next solid principle, which is the interface segregation principle. So you can see that interface segregation is actually, de it deals with the interfaces. So first of all, I'm going to start the video by defining what exactly is an interface. And then we will move to the principle and how it actually applies to the software development world. Right. So let's start with a simple thing. What is an interface? So basically an interface is a it can it consists of some unimplemented methods. Right. So let's take a very simple example. Right. We will take this example and we will see what exactly is an interface. So first of all, in Java, if you want to define an interface, you will have to use the interface keyword. Right. Simple thing. Now, in this keyword, you can see that this is the name of the interface, which is actions. And in this interface, you can see I have two functions. The first function is the fly function and the second function is the swim function. One important thing that you will note here is that these functions have no implementation. So these are basically unimplemented method. OK, so we have understood this point that these are just unimplemented. But why are they unimplemented and uh, what is the reason? Uh, what is actually the use of this particular type of interface when we don't even have the implementation? The answer is it acts as a blueprint of a particular uh, set of actions, right? So you can see there are some functions and it represents those functions, right? So let's say we have a class here. Right. We are taking the simple example. We have already seen the use of interfaces in the previous tutorial. We saw a very important application of interface uh, in Liskov substitution also. So here, let's say we have a class duck, right? We know that a uh, duck is actually a bird and it has some uh, actions to do. So if you want to uh, make sure that this duck does these two actions, which is to fly and swim, you will have to write the implements keyword and the name of the interface, right? So name of the interface was actions. So if I write implements actions, then it becomes necessary for the duck class to override these two functions and provide the necessary implementations, right? So here you can see I am using the at the rate override annotation and using these annotation, I'm overriding the function. So here the full fly function with implementation will be written here. Okay, so that's clear. We now know that interface acts as a blueprint for our class and whenever we want any particular class to implement a set of actions, we are going to create an interface and we will do that, right? Now the question will come to into your mind that what is the need of this implement uh, of this uh, implementation, which is why do we need interfaces? What I could have done here is instead of even using the interface actions, I could have just simply provided the fly and the swim function here, right? So I could have just done this, right? Just write the fly function here and write the implementation of swim function here. And I do not even need it to implement this interface, right? So let's forget about interfaces. And you can see that here an important question might come up into your mind that I can do the same thing by just writing the implementation. Why do I need to implement the interface? The answer to that lies in two important concepts of interfaces, two important advantages of interfaces, which is it provides abstraction, which you can see here, and it provides another thing which is known as loose coupling, right? We will study these two concepts in a minute, but before that we will have to study the interface segregation principle. Now interface segregation principle says uh, it is similar to what we have studied in the single responsibility principle, which was the first solid principle. So it, uh, the solid principle, which was actually the single responsibility, it was applied to a class. The same thing we are going to apply to an interface. So the interface segregation principle says that if you have an interface that has more than one set of actions, so you can see that here we have fly and so we have two actions here. It says that you will have, you should uh, implement it in a way. The principle says that divide this whole interface into two interfaces. The first interface will contain only the fly method and the second interface will contain only the swim method. Now this makes sense because there are some birds which are only able to fly and not swim. So I can just write that okay, uh, the duck can fly and swim. So I will just write implements. And remember that a class can implement more than one interface. So I can write the duck can implement flyable and and also the swimmable interface, right? So let's assume that I've created two interfaces, which is the flyable interface, which is this one. It contains this unimplemented method. And there is a swimmable interface, which contains the swim function. So what we are essentially trying to do is we are trying to divide a particular interface into two different interface interfaces. The reason why we are doing that is to, uh, which is segregation. We are actually segregating interfaces into two different actions. The reason behind that is that we have much more readable code. So here we know that the duck is able to fly and swim also. So if we have a condition where we have a, a particular class, which let's say we have a class pigeon, we know that a pigeon can fly, but has inability to swim, right? So I can write only flyable here. So implements flyable. Right. And here I will just override again the fly function, right? and I will provide the whole implementation here. Now, 
when we are trying to do this, we can now see the advantages of uh, segregating an interface into two because we might have conditions where we want to implement only one of the set of actions, right? So it is a good principle and uh, it will help a lot. It is similar to the single responsibility because we are saying that every interface will have only one single responsibility. All right, so we have studied about interfaces and now we have also covered interface segregation. Now let's try to understand why we are using interfaces. Why are we not just uh, writing the implementations in the code like this, right? That is a big question. So the answer to that is, let's suppose I have a class A, right? Let's suppose I have this class A and let's assume that this class implements two methods. Let's say these are the fly and swim method. Right? So this class A is implementing these two methods. It is not using an interface. So here we have the whole implementation of fly and swim method. Now consider a situation where there is a class which inherits from this class A. Right? So I'm going to write a class B. And now this class B extends the feature of class A. Now you will observe that this class B, since it inherits the properties and behavior, which is the functions from class A, it has the ability to read these functions or to access these two functions. That is a big uh, disadvantage of using inheritance with such functions because if these functions are actually uh, designed to be abstract for this class A only, then this class B should not have access to that. That's why if you use an interface, it becomes necessary for class B to implement its own set of actions by overriding the fly and swim functions. Okay, so let's see what is data abstraction. So here you can see if I would have not chosen to use interfaces, I will get into this big trouble where the class B is able to access. So if I create an object of class B, this object will be able to access the fly and swim function. So for this object, these two implementations are accessible or visible. There is one big problem, which is abstraction. The first problem is abstraction, right? So what we are doing is we are actually using interfaces. So when we have, we are using interfaces, this class duck will have its own implementation of fly. This class pigeon can have its own implementation of fly. And these two classes don't have knowledge of what is the implementation of fly function in the other classes. So this is abstraction. We have abstracted a function to a particular class. The other classes of the code, which even are extending from this class, they have no access to the fly function because they are not inheriting these features. It is actually provided in an interface. So interface, uh, we have studied, it is now actually providing a big advantage of uh, OOP's concept, which is to uh, allow abstraction. Now let's study the second most important concept, which is known as loose coupling. So there is a concept known as loose coupling and there is a concept known as tight coupling. Two of the very important concepts in design, in object oriented design. And here, loose coupling means that if you have two classes, or let's say you have two objects, let's say this is the first object and let's say these, this is the second object, right? So this one is the first object and this one is the second object. Loose coupling means that these two objects do not have much knowledge about each other and these two objects can independently work on their set of actions without even interrupting or without even relying on the functions of the other object. So in common terms, I can just say loose coupling actually makes sure that the objects of two different classes are not dependent on each other, which means they are not coupled with each other. So if they are loosely coupled, it means that they do not rely a lot on each other. And this provides us a big advantage because if I want to execute the functions inside of this, I will not be this uh, object two will not interrupt in this particular functioning of object A, right? So this is the concept of loose coupling. The tight coupling will be the opposite of this. In tight coupling, two objects or two classes or even two implementations rely on each other. So if one object fails to provide some details, the second object will also fail to uh, provide the necessary details, right? So now we have studied loose coupling. Let's see how interfaces uh, makes the code uh, loosely coupled, right? So here you can see that when we are using this uh, interface, we have a different implementation in class duck for the fly function. And we have the uh, a different implementation of fly function here. Now, if I create an object of the pigeon class and I call the fly function, this fly function will be called, right? And this fly function is not dependent on this uh, class duck, right? So if we see that in the case of inheritance, so this is basically the case of inheritance. The major drawback of inheritance is that if you define the functions in class A, this class B is tightly coupled with class A because if I will use the object of class B, I will be able to access the fly and swim function. So I am actually relying on class A to implement the fly and swim function, right? So if class A is not providing the right implementation as per my expectation, this class B is now dependent on class A and it makes sense that the child class is dependent on the parent class. So this is an example of tight coupling. 
how we can loosely couple we have already seen that instead of writing these functions in class a write them separately in this interface and since they they are separate we have separated these two dependencies so these two are actually you can consider them as dependency so these dependencies are actually this object b will require the class a to implement these dependencies so to uh, so in order to make sure that the coupling is not there to decouple right there is an important term to decouple which means to remove these dependencies from class a we can actually put these dependencies in an interface and if this class b wants to implement the uh, fly function or the swing function it can actually do that right so that is an important point loose coupling and abstraction so these two are very important concepts and make sure that uh, if in one go you are not able to understand loose coupling make sure to watch this video one more time because i know that a loose coupling concept is not that much easy to grab in the first time so you can take a look at these examples draw it out yourself and you will be able to quickly understand everything related to this if you have more questions or if you want to add something to it you can write that in the comments on this video and make sure to like this video and subscribe our channel in the next video we are going to cover the last principle of solid principle which is the dependency inversion principle now dependency we have already studied here which is here you can see fly and swim is the dependencies of class b right there will be more such examples where you will see that a particular object has a dependency on the other object we will study that in the next tutorial which is the dependency inversion so that's all for this tutorial thanks for watching